The exciting thing about it isn't just the resolution, which isn't that good in the field. People with MR have better resolution. But what we can bind, we can make radio tracers that look at receptors in your system and quantify receptor function pre and post synaptic. We can use it every day. We use it to look at glucose metabolism, which tells us something about cancer. We can actually measure in your brain because these gammas come out of the body. We inject it, we look at the blood flow, we look at the delivery, and then we look at what is happening in the brain. What we can do is look at function and specific targeted function for areas in the body where there may be disease to try and understand the physiology that's going on without cutting a person up or without cutting up an animal. So when we build these radionuclides into molecules that we use, one of the crucial things is we pair the radionuclide with the physiology. So for example, if I wanted to look at uh, metabolism and glucose, one of the first things we would think about is glucose has carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. So we would want to use oxygen or carbon to understand glucose metabolism. Well, that means that what you have is oxygen 15 with a two minute half-life. And let me tell you, you can't make a glucose molecule in two minutes or four minutes, at which point you're getting pretty low in activity. But you can use carbon 11 with 20 minute half-life and that's a positron emitter. And we started out making glucose that way. And in fact, the funniest thing is like, when it first started, and we're talking almost 30 years ago, well, maybe a little more now. Um, they actually used Swiss chard leaves. They didn't know how to chemically make glucose quickly. And so they had this huge batch of Swiss chard leaves over in uh, St. Louis and in Brookhaven. And they would take the carbon 11, put it in there, let the leaves do photosynthesis, make the glucose, and purify it. We've gotten better, but it's still a challenge with carbon 11. Let me say, like, I wanted to make thymidine. So what I do is I use a cyclotron. I make carbon dioxide. Then I convert that carbon dioxide the way you would use a catalytic converter in your car, except I do a reverse reaction. And I make methane. Then I make cyanide. Then I convert it chemically to cyanate. Then I make it into urea. Then I do a, I do a cyclocondensation to make thymine. Then I purify it so I can do an enzyme reaction and add a sugar to make, or to make thymine. Then I do an enzyme reaction to make thymidine. Then I have to purify it. I have to do that complete organic synthesis in less than an hour because it's 20 minute half-life. We can do it and then we have to show it's pure and do radiochemical purity and chemical purity and all of this without losing all our activity. And I love doing that because I'm not a patient person, and it's a real challenge. But for practical methods for a clinical service, this isn't good. So chemists have spent a lot of time trying to get a longer half-life. Costs a lot to do that kind of synthesis. So what we found is that fluorine with a two-hour half-life can replace a hydroxyl in many molecules. So fluorine 18 has a 110-minute half-life, and it's a positron emitter, and we actually have new chemical methods that can actually incorporate it into a molecule. And so fluorodeoxyglucose is one of our primary agents for PET, and it's used to look at glucose metabolism for cancer. And it's used every day in many, many hospitals in pretty much every big city. In nuclear medicine, there's one other thing that gets used, and it's called a generator. Now, a generator is made uniquely because what happens with a generator is it uses two isotopes that decay. What we want is we want an isotope that goes in the body and then decays and then is stable. We don't want to have a lot more chains of radionuclides going through that cause more ionization in the body. So we're pretty specific again. But with a generator what happens is we have a decaying parent radionuclide and when it decays for each decay, it makes a, another uh, element. And that element, in this case, is radioactive. But what we do is we use chemistry with a generator to make it useful, and we bind the parent element, radionuclide, to something where it won't come off. And the daughter, we 
capture. And the most famous generator is a technetium 99 m generator. And the parent is molybdenum-99. It has a 66-hour half-life. And we bind it to a bunch of essentially sand, but it's pure for aluminum oxide. We actually use aluminum oxide column. It's about this big. And all the molybdenum-99 gets put on. And then it gets shipped off to these radio pharmacies or the hospitals. Then what happens is, as the molybdenum decays, it makes technetium 99M. The technetium 99M isn't PET, but it's an isomeric, gives off a gamma radionuclide. And you just put saline, sterile saline through, and all the technetium that's made in a day or six hours, it's diluted. Then we radio label it, we inject it. And we can do this day after day after day for two weeks till the parent decays, and we just keep making activity. So we call it milking the cow, and that's a generator. 